behind the apartment buildings, there was this alley, and it was called Good Bread Alley, for the obvious reasons. That's where a lot of people got a lot of good bread. Bread being a term for drugs, uh, prostitutes, hot items. Uh, people would bring jewelry and fence it or pawn it with with um, loan sharks. Um, as a cab driver, I, I had the um, unpleasant experience to have had a fare that um, I picked up and it's a two-story apartment building with stairs along the side with a porch across the top on the front. And um, sitting in the cab, I Fair. I think I had, I was probably about my 10 or 12th fair that, that night and while I'm sitting there, I mean this all happened in the space of uh, maybe three or four minutes, uh, I heard gunfire. Good Bread Alley was a place that violence and, and uh, danger was something that was as thick as smoke in the air. I don't know firsthand of the incidences that took place, but there were a lot. There were a lot of murders. Uh, there were a lot of shootings, stabbings. Good Bread Alley came about when uh, this lady uh, from one of the islands in the Bahamas, she made homemade bread and it carried a scent all around Dixie Lane. So when people wanted bread, they said, well, let's go to Good Bread Alley. And that's how the name Good Bread Alley came about. Growing up from here as a boy, I've experienced a lot of things. From what I'm looking at now is not even a drop in the bucket of what we call Dixie Lane or Good Bread Alley or whatever, you know. So there's the changes that has been made here, you know, during these times here. And I haven't been in this area in years, so to me, it's just like going into another town, you know, what I've grown up in. You know, every house, a little wooden house there, a little wooden house down there, a line of houses, wooden houses. And they took away these wooden houses on the trailers, truck, you know, take it down the street and take some to Liberty City, someplace, someplace else. So I don't know where they went with all the houses, but they had to make way, you know, for the future. Uh, I've had a couple of fairs in my cab that would tell me how great it was. It was a time when Overtown was a jumping place as they refer it to. And Good Bread Alley was one of the places that made it jump. As we had so much to do and we were close knit, we can reach out of our window to our next door neighbor house and get a plate of food. You know, that's how close we were. And, uh, the crime was down, and finally, later on in years, and then we still start picking up little, you know, breaking and stuff like that. But we never even locked the doors in the houses there. The reality of it is this. Most people won't know this unless they're actually here, you know, um, or if they've been here. You know, Overtown was a self-sustaining community. And I come from people who are obviously from a Good Bread Alley, from Overtown, who are well-educated, who built their own homes, had families, never arrested, college educated, some business owners, just, just good people. But unfortunately, that's not what people see today. I can only imagine that what it was would have only gotten stronger. You have your church community, you have your corner community, you know, just people who you might rather see in the street and build with. You got your stores, the people who you see on a regular basis, you buy your bread, your butter, your milk, and you know, you build these type of connections and then like one day it's not there. I don't recognize this Miami anymore. This is not what it's always looked like. You know? But this is not an uncommon story, unfortunately. It happens all the time. It happens everywhere, you know, around the country.